Welcome back, everybody. In the previous video, we looked uh, in a bit of detail at current row filtering to see how it worked and how uh, it contributed to the revision of filters inside of DAX. In this video, we're going to look at override filters, right, which is the other way that we could change filters using a revisor. And the good news is, uh, I think it's quite a bit easier than current row filtering. Current row filtering, you kind of have to remember that it gets executed once per row, and, you know, you, you can't see the filters in the, the code that you write. With override filters, uh, it's much, much easier. So, hey, with that said, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xosx, and I'm in co the Concepts Override tab. And, hey, look, we've got some code. Uh, we've got a revisor uh, with some overrides, to be specific. So the revisor that we're using here is the calculate function, right? And just like before, just like always, the uh, revisor is going to have a sub-expression that is, you know, frozen. We could think of it as frozen, that will uh, run once we revise the filters. We're going to create a revised filter context, and then once we've got that, we're going to go ahead and uh, unfreeze and run this code right here, right? Now, before... To change the filters, we would uh, run our revisor as part of an expression column. Here, we're not doing that. Here, we're not doing that. Here, what we're saying, here, what we're saying instead, is uh, we're actually going to explicitly list out the filters that we want to add. So argument one of calculate is its sub-expression. This is what we're going to run after we revise the filters. Argument two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand are the different uh, filters that we want to add, that we want to add. Right. Specifically, we're going to add a filter for shift equals lunch and type equals to go. So how does this thing work? Well, uh, here's our code right here. We start off with an existing filter context that we're just going to um, treat as empty. We're, we'll assume that we start with a, an empty filter context to make our life a little bit easier. Right. So what happens? What happens with this code? Well, the most important thing that you have to remember is that we freeze this first argument, right? Argument one is frozen because we're not going to run it until after we revise the filter. So this happens last. That's it's probably the trickiest bit of uh, revisors is remembering that this is going to happen after uh, the other arguments are run, okay? So we freeze this, right? Uh, what happens then? Well, then, 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 the revisor is going to evaluate these two um, bits of code right here, this one and this one. It's going to turn them into tables. It's going to turn this into a table for shift equals lunch, and it'll turn this one into a table of type equals to go. And I think from the previous chapters, you can kind of see uh, how this becomes this and this uh, becomes this. So, so these become uh, temp tables, right? And right now they're just uh, tables, and they're just sort of sitting there on the uh, additional arguments of calculate. Then the revisor calculate will take these tables and add them, add them to the filter context. It'll add them to the filter context to create a new revised filter context, right? So hey, calculate's going to um, revise the filters. How do you want to revise them? Well, I want to add this filter, and I want to add this filter. That's what this bit means right here, okay? So it adds those filters, adds those filters, creates our revised filter context, and then when it's done, it will take it will take that frozen uh, sub-expression right there, it will unfreeze it, and now in the new revised filter context, it will evaluate it. It will run it to generate um, a number in this case, the number 7, which is this expression uh, run under these filter, filter for shift equals lunch and type equals to go. So if you run this code under these filters, you get the number 7, okay? So uh, that's actually not too tricky. It's not too tricky, okay? Now, um, one thing we haven't talked much about, which we'll talk about for just a second, is the calculate table function. And we're actually gonna, not going to use this a, a whole lot, but um, it, it will become important later on, and I think it's important that you just sort of see how it works. The, the calculate table function works exactly the same way as calculate. The only difference is you use it when the sub-expression that you want to freeze and run under new filters um, is a sub-expression that returns a table rather than a scalar. So in this case, this is going to return just a single number right there, right? Uh, what happens if the sub-expression returns a table? Well, uh, the only difference is you use the calculate table function. Let's go down here, right? So let me ah, use the arrows to get that lined up just perfect. Ah, there we go. Much better. So... So, 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 here we have a pretty similar thing where we're using the calculate table function. We've got a sub-expression that we're going to freeze uh, and run under a revised set of filters, right? The difference here is the uh, sub-expression, this values, it's, it's a derivation, you may recognize it. This is going to return um, not a uh, single value, like a, a scalar, like a number or a date or something like that. It's going to return an entire table. It's specifically, it's going to return all the visible dishes, all the visible columns in the dish column of the mini table. 
Okay, but it's only going to run it after we change the filters, right? So because this is a, a, a table value sub-expression, we have to use the calculate table function. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Okay, but again, just so you can see it twice, because I think it's kind of useful. What does this thing do? Well, calculate table is going to start by freezing this first sub-expression. This is the last thing that gets evaluated. Gosh, that's important to remember. This is the last thing that gets evaluated. Okay, so it freezes it. Then what happens? Well, uh, it's going to take all the other arguments, two through a, you know, a million or however many other arguments you have, which are going to be um, little bits of code that evaluate two tables. So this is going to evaluate to that, and this is going to evaluate to that. Right? So it evaluates them, turns them into tables. Right? And once they're tables, it says, OK, what the, uh, the person who wrote this code is asking for is they want to run this with this and this added as filters. So let me add those as filters. It takes the existing filter context. It adds that filter. It, or I should just say it takes that table and adds it as a filter. It takes that temp table, adds it as a filter, which creates our revised filter context, our revised filter context. Well, now that the revised filter context exists, right, uh, the, the function, the calculate table function can say, OK, I'm done revising the filters. I have a revised filter context. I can go ahead and take this sub expression that was frozen way back here. I can unfreeze it, and now I can run it under this new revised set of filters, this new revised set of filters. And if I run this code, uh, not under the old filters, but under the new filters, I will get these two dishes right here, dish equals pasta and burger, right? If I ran this same thing uh, out here, I would get an extra row for salad. But if we're just looking at lunch and to go, uh, we only see pasta and burger, right? And that, in a nutshell, um, is how the calculate table function works. Uh, you know, you, you could use this with current row filtering as well, but I think this is a nice, easy example to get used to it. The, the, the important thing with calculate table is it's what you use when your sub-expression returns not just a single value, but an entire table of values, okay? So that's it for a little little um, overview of how these override filters work. I think they're a whole lot easier, which is why they're going to be the first thing that we really focus on, and they're going to give us a lot of power. Okay, so I do hope that was helpful, and I will see you next video.